everyone, it's Erin. I am going to, it's a family reunion slash 50th anniversary for my in-laws. And I thought I would create kind of a fun gift for them. We are also doing a slideshow that my husband's putting together and everybody has kind of scraped around and found all these old family photos of which I went down and put them into a small size. They're all about three inches or two inches or you know, two and a half inches or so. And I'm gonna put them on as a collage onto this just it's just as just came as an extra sheet it's mostly just as a backing for this crate i found at joann's um so this is going to go into here and then i have this and i thought this was pretty fun i have this family that i'm going to put on front and for their anniversary or sorry for their wedding their colors were like an ice blue or a very light baby blue so that's the color i'm going to make the family i really like the color of the box as itself and so I don't think I'm gonna really mess with the box it kind of came as a really cool color already this really kind of fun you know just as a pine colored and they live in the country so it's got this kind of country you know shabby look already which is really fun so the first step that I'm gonna do is I went ahead and I printed all of the pictures and I sized them down and I tried to size them so they would fit on my sheet and this sheet fits very nicely in here first step is I'm going to cut I'm going to cut this down and I tried to make it look like a collage and the reason why I went with black and white is because when I put all of these pictures and some of these pictures are back from the early 80s um, you can tell my husband is in here and I'm in some of these photos here and there too and it goes from when the kids were little all the way up to the most recent photo which is right here this is the most recent one that they've had and it ranges from all the kids being really tiny all the way up to today. So because there are so many different colors and some of these pictures were scanned and some of them were digital, um, I just decided to go with black and white as the base for all the colors of the photos. So at this point, I am just cutting it up. The length of this box is actually 12 inches, but I don't have 12 inch paper. So I'm cutting it so that way I can fit it. I did it in two separate installments. And the paper I'm using is a thicker cardstock. I just used the back of a piece of cardstock. This is actually die cuts with a new paper. Um, but it's just white paper. And now I'm trimming it up. All right, so I've trimmed it so that way it looks like it's cohesive all the way across. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use um, a matte medium as my base. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the main part of the pictures down to the page, and then I'm gonna cover it in matte medium, mostly just to kind of solidify it to the page. I am gonna go through and probably trim a little bit of this off. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges and ink the edges just to get rid of, and I'm just using a gray just to get through and kind of clean up the edge a little bit so you don't see the brown. Alright, so at this point all I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying the matte medium and speed this up. All right, so now that I put the coat on, it's kind of giving it this vintage-y feel, which is kind of fun. Um, it did kind of bleed a little bit of paints because I just used my laser printer to print this, all these pictures, and they were just printed on cardstock. So it did bleed through a little bit, but that's cool. It's kind of a background to the idea. And that's really what I wanted, it's just kind of this fun background sheet that's going on. So I'm gonna let this dry. And give it a good amount of drying time. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to start painting my family. The colors of the wedding were an ice blue and the closest I could find was this winter blue. So I'm gonna paint it winter blue, let it dry, and I'm gonna go back in with some glimmer mist from Tattered Angels and Dazzling Diamonds and really kind of make it fun and sparkly. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up while I paint. I'm 
done painting my family, but I'm not entirely happy with the color on it. And I found um, a high impact paint that was a blue from Tattered Angels that I have. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just kinda, I'm not gonna worry about the corners and stuff and the insides, but I am gonna coat the reach coat the top of it. I think I like this color a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in now with the Dazzling Diamonds just to give it kind of a fun sheen on the whole thing and really shake it well from side to side and just kind of go in and give it a light something over all of it. I'm not too worried that it's got some lighter and darker spots. It kind of gives it that vintagey look, but I did want to make sure that in anywhere where the, the paint kind of pooled up or bubbled, I did want to make sure that it stayed nice and flat so it didn't have any kind of bubbly spots is the, around the corners and in here just kind of flattened it out as best as I could everywhere I saw that it was kind of raised up or bubbled so I'm just gonna go in and spray I'm gonna let this air dry for a while and I like the fact that it's kind of pooling in certain places and kind of looking a little swirly, liking that effect. All right, so now that this is kind of set, it's not, I wouldn't say this is 100% dry, but it's definitely a lot closer. I'm gonna go ahead and set this in. Now I need a very, very, very firm grip to this. So I'm gonna use this Power Tack by Beacon. So I'm going to lightly place some glue, just a bead of glue. And the reason why I'm using a firmer glue than probably I needed to is this is gonna be hanging on the wall this way. And the last thing I need is for them to have an issue with the way that it's laying. So very carefully go in, go on one side, lay it down and push down and I cut it so it fits. So lay it in and then just start kind of pressing where the glue is gonna be, make sure you have clean hands. Get in all the corners and really make sure this is nice and firm. And again, I really wanted a good strong glue so I knew this wouldn't come off. I mean, it's pretty in there. Now if you wanna go in and kind of clean up the back, whatever glue is kind of peeled up, you can go in now, but it's a pretty clean barrier. And it's just a very neutral background on this, which was the other thing I liked about doing it on this kind of cardstock piece. And so there is this. The glue takes a good 24 hours to fully, fully, fully set, but it's pretty much there. So all I need now is for my family piece to dry before I can glue that on. All right, so I've let this dry overnight and really get nice and hard. And what I'm gonna do now is I love the look of the wood, but I just think it needs a little something. So Campus Core has some great ropes, and here I have just a neutral color, natural, and I have a black, because I'm kind of going for that. The pop of blue is my one big color that I'm gonna go for. So I think because there's three slats, I'm gonna go black, natural, black is my feeling. And I know there's kind of a bottom rung here, but I'm not really gonna do anything. And it's just to add some more dimension to the outside. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it, and for this I'm gonna use Beacon 3-in-1. I don't need some super strong tacky glue for this particular part of it. Um, and I'm just gonna run it around the perimeter here, all the way along the edge, and then tack my glue onto, or my rope onto that. So all I've done is I've taken the rope, I ran the bead of glue like you saw, and then I ran the rope around three times and just kept it flat and rotated it. And then just make sure you tuck it in right at the very end. And the same thing, I think groups of three always work best versus just doing a single, unless you had a really thick rope, but the rope I'm using is not super, super thick. So that's why I'm gonna keep it just as strands of three. So for this particular rope, same thing. 
Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go two black and then natural at the bottom. So I've let all the uh, rope dry all the way around the edge and I did go with uh, two black and one natural looking one. And it's just kind of a little something extra on the sides. The family is completely dry. I mean, it's bone dry. And we're gonna again use our power tack glue to make sure this sticks because it only has a few spots. It has right here, 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 and a little bit here. I wanna try and cinch it so I'm not even gonna have that. So it has four places where it's gonna get tacked onto the crate. And I really wanna make sure it has a nice firm hold. This is not heavy, but because it's gonna be in an upright position like this, I don't want it falling off over time. So I really wanna make sure that it has a nice, good, secure hold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark right about where I want it to be glued. So I'm going to center this. Oh, I just realized I've got a little bit of a boo-boo there. It's okay. After I glue it down, I'm going to fix that and add some a little wash. Apparently, it got a little dark right there. It's kind of funny. All right, so I'm going to go in right here. Pull it down. Get it centered the way that you want it to. I'm gonna bring it down just a tiny bit. And just go in with my marker and just kind of mark right where it's gonna hit. Just a little marking I, I have on there. This is gonna be the top. So I'm just gonna go in. I don't wanna get it above this because there's really no point. You're not gonna see it. A little bit of glue on each of the corners where it's going to hit. And if you did notice, I did put a little bit of um, blue. So if this does get flipped over, it's good to go. And then just rest this right where it's going to sit. And I'm going to let this dry flat. It does take a good 24 hours to fully set in. So I don't want to lift this up and have problems. Now right here, it kind of bubbled out, so I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of clean it up a little bit before it fully dries. All right, so I'm not too happy with the way that this is looking. I'm just gonna go back in with some of my light blue high impact paint from Tattered Angels. And just kind of hit that little spot. And just because you're gonna see a little bit more of that blue, I'm just adding a little bit here and there, not overdoing it, but just a little bit of something here and there, just to kind of give it something to, so it looks continuous. So it didn't look like I just patched that one spot. It's got spots around where you can see the lighter blue again. And so this is all just gonna kind of dry together. I'll get some really good pictures of this. This is a wall hanging, so it's gonna hang up on a wall and it's just gonna use one of the slats in the back to kind of set up on the wall because it's got some space in the back where it can just hang on a couple of hooks or something. So thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.